What's going on everyone? So here's the deal. As I was going through some of my files today, I realized that I recorded a few minutes of a video on Blink uh, probably a little while ago, but for whatever reason, must have forgotten to use it. So rather than deleting it, I'm uploading it for you now, and I guess I'm uploading it for myself too, because after watching it, I realized that I mentioned a few other stocks like Workhorse, Neo, and even Lordstown Motors. And what I especially liked about this video was that in this video, I talked about the price action for all of those stocks for that time period, which was about August the 25th. And listening to me discuss the share prices of that time frame really just made me feel good because it shows you exactly just how bullish these stocks have been in such a short period of time. It was actually very motivational, which is exactly why I wouldn't dare hit that delete button on this video. Because in doing so, I would have turned myself into a very selfish man, sharing only with myself. So anyways, you guys, now you have a short video to watch, and at the end of it all, I'm going to share a strategy with you that you should be using right now to protect yourself in this volatile market, and, you know, taking some profits off the table. And now, without any further ado, check out the video. Wow. What an exciting day in the market today. We get news on Blink, and no, I'm not talking about that uh, Culpepper or whatever the hell that shorter's name is. I'm not talking about that. That's old news. I'm talking about news that came out today that was positive that should have made Blink move to, uh, you know, the upwards direction towards heaven. And it did. It did. In Blink's defense, it started moving up. But then it did something that we weren't expecting. It uh, started moving downwards. So why in the heck did this happen? Why does the stock drop on positive news? And what in the world do you do when you're in this situation? Especially when you're holding shares that, let's say you bought it 13 bucks, maybe more, and now the stock is like eight bucks, seven bucks, six bucks even we've seen out of it. What do you do in this video I'm gonna tell you exactly what the heck you're gonna do with your Blink shares. And if you don't own any Blink shares, I'm gonna tell you what you need to be doing in order to take advantage of someone else's misfortune. Now, don't feel bad about doing it. It's just a temporary misfortune for this entity. So we're gonna take advantage of it. We're gonna capitalize on it and I'm also going to be going over the latest Blink news, okay? We're going to talk about what that means for Blink. What should you be expecting right now? So don't go anywhere because we're going to be starting right now. Hey, what's going on? It's Pat from Top Ticker Trades. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to grow your wealth, through investing and trading stocks in the market, make sure you start right now by subscribing and tapping that bell so you never miss a thing. I'll see you in the video. Let's go. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's a pleasure to have you back on the channel. Welcome back to another video. So today, obviously, we're going to be talking about Blink, but I want to take just eh, about 30, 45 seconds to talk about today in the marketplace. So you guys, the ones that follow me at least, you know that I'm all about my EV stocks. You know, I'm about NEO, Workhorse, and um, today, NEO had a 15% move. It set a new 52-week high at $17.32. At least, that's what it was last time I checked, and it's been a little while, so if I'm giving you bad information, uh, it's not that I'm doing it intentionally, it's that I have not checked the market since I began recording. Also, Workhorse, up around nine to 10%. It was hitting close to about 18 bucks last time I looked at it. So I'm very excited about that. Now, that being said, I'm sure it'll uh, drop back down. Don't get too excited yet, but rest assured when we get that USPS uh, contract news, it will fly. 
Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because I did want to share that, you know, some of my favorite stocks are uh, kicking tail today. But also at the same time, I want to point your attention to the screen where you will see my Twitter account. And as you can see, I posted all this hours ago and I am active on Twitter pretty much every day. That is the quickest way for you guys to get updates from me when things are going on in the market. So if you're not following me on Twitter, make sure that you follow me. I've got the link down in the description for you below. Um, but to wrap up real quick, NEO is up or was up 15%. Uh, workhorse right around about 10%. Then I also called IBIO this morning, which hit another 25% run after what it did yesterday. So that's massive. Now it did kind of cool down by the end of the day. And at the time of, uh, before I started recording, it was up about 15%. Take a look at your screen and you will see that you've got Blink News. So as I mentioned previously in this video, News came out about Blink this morning and the stock started going up and then dropped. So what was going on yesterday? Yesterday, we know that the stock hit into the six or $6 range and then worked its way up towards the $8 range and pretty much in the after hours, it made it there. As the chart shows, it hit $8.87 in the pre-market, and then out of nowhere, it gets dumped back down to the $7 range, where it pretty much traded most of the day. Now, while I was watching it uh, during the day, it was around like $7.40, $7.50, and then right before I started recording this video, it was like 771, 772, looked like maybe it wanted to you know, start going back up. So we'll see where it goes. I still don't know what the price is, so I'm gonna be just as surprised as you. Pretty cool to see what news does to a stock, right? So, or let me, let me be clear on this. What positive news does to a stock? So a bunch of you are probably wondering, okay, if. If we had positive news come out, first of all, let me tell you what the news was. Blink receives over a million dollars in a follow-on order from Inner Energy that they're going to use in order to deploy their EV charging equipment in the Dominican Republic. But we know that this dropped the stock. Or did it? Let's take a look at what happened. Now what you're looking at here is a report that shows new and sold out positions. So as we can see, we've got 12 new holders that purchased 124,250 shares, which is awesome. But those sellouts, uh, which you can see under the sold out positions, there's 11 holders that sold a total of 293,187 shares. That's more than double of the new positions that we have so you know that kind of explains that sell-off doesn't it so now you know because i'm a man of my word here comes the content that i worked so hard to create for you i'm going to be showing you how to develop a super strategy that will serve in protecting your position by minimizing and reducing any risks involved in your traditional trading and investing, as well as enable you to generate consistent profits, significantly reduce your cost basis when acquiring stocks, as well as being able to sell them immediately at a much higher price than the market value. If this sounds good to you, make sure you smash that like button as it'll really help support me and it'll really help support the channel it takes a lot of time for me to make these videos and i'm not asking for money you know i'm not sitting here with my cup out asking for change all i want is for everyone to smash the like button and maybe subscribe here and there okay thanks so first things first what we're doing here or how we're gonna accomplish this is through the use of simple stock options now before you get all scared if you know stock options isn't your thing let me assure you that this will be 
quick and painless. It'll be a quick and painless lesson. You're going to know what you're doing by the end of this video. We're going to combine some simple strategies, some very basic level strategies, and we're going to turn them into that super duper strategy that I just mentioned. And it's going to do all that amazing and wonderful stuff for you. I did not just make all of that up. So please bear with me and give this thing a shot and I guarantee you it's going to change the way that you invest and trade stocks forever. So first things first, you should figure out which of your stocks you're going to be holding forever or at least the ones that you plan on hanging on to for, you know, the long term. And by long term, since long term may mean something different to you than it does to me or anyone else, let's just say that we're talking about stocks that you are not trading at this time. In other words, you're you're keeping them. So once you've done this, and I'm assuming you're going to make some sort of list, the next thing that you're going to want to do is figure out which of these stocks you've got at least 100 shares of. Now, ideally, when you're buying stocks, try to set a goal of buying at least 100 shares. Now, obviously, not all stocks are created equal, which means that you're not going to be able to afford to buy 100 shares of every single stock that's out there. Neither can I. Here's what I want you to do about that. I want you to further refine the list that you just made by making a third list that's going to include all of the stocks that you don't have 100 shares of yet. And you're gonna have two options to choose from. Number one, you can continue to buy shares over time until you've acquired at least 100 shares. And so let me go ahead and address this part right now. It doesn't have to be 100 shares, but it does have to be in increments of 100 shares. In other words, you know, 100, 200, 300, and so on. And the reason for this, since I haven't explained it before, if you don't know this already, when you're dealing with stock options, whether that's a call or a put, you're dealing with contracts. Now, each contract is equivalent to controlling 100 shares. So you're going to be controlling 100 shares, no matter whether you're dealing with a put option or a call option, just off of one contract. And this, my friends, is what allows you to magnify the profits. But that's a story for another day. Let's continue on here. Through the use of my second strategy, you can also acquire your 100 shares a lot cheaper. But, you know, there's always an exception, but you're going to need just a little bit of cash, okay? Whatever the break-even value is on that trade, that's how much you're going to need in your in your account as collateral. Don't worry about that for now. I'm going to I'm going to have to show you that when we get to the second strategy, but I just wanted to kind of throw that out there just to let you know that it exists. That's my favorite phrase to use because all my college professors used to say that crap to me when they weren't teaching me anything. Not not implying that that's what's going on here because I actually am going to teach you something. So we're going to put this list aside for now like I just said because we're going to be focusing instead on the stocks that you do own 100 shares or that you own increments of 100 shares of. And what you'll want to do here is pick one of those stocks that you're currently up on, okay? Preferably, you'll want to use, use this strategy when the stock is either overextended or if you're expecting it to go down. And another thing before I forget, what you need to know about this strategy is that there will be situations where you don't want to use it. And some stocks are more appealing to use it on than others. So remember when I asked you earlier to separate your long investments from your short, short term investments? Reason being is that you can be more risky with your short term stocks or the ones that you don't care about selling or being forced to sell. And as you'll soon find out, you're still going to be able to apply this strategy to your long term stocks, but you'll want to play it extra safe, which means that you want to be able to profit as much as you would as you would by using shares that you don't care about selling. But essentially what we're doing here is we're going to use your position as leverage. So in other words, we're going to take your hundred shares and use them as collateral to make some money. 
Now, the best analogy that I can possibly come up with to explain the benefits of incorporating this strategy into your daily trading and investing routines is pretty much it's it's like renting out a house okay or renting out a property except in this strategy you're not going to be dealing with all the inconvenient crap like renters that don't want to pay you rent or destroy your beautiful property okay in this strategy you're basically buying shares of stock and then using them to profit okay you're going to be i'm not going to say renting but in the in a way you almost kind of are like renting and you're going to understand this better when I break it down to you, but pretty much think of it in, in those terms for now. But specifically, you're going to be thinking of yourself as the landlord. You own an asset and, th and in this case, your asset is 100 shares of stock. And just as a landlord co collects his rent money each and every single month, you'll be collecting rent on your asset except you're not tied down to having to wait an entire month. You see, what's good about stock options is that certain stocks have options that expire weekly, monthly, yearly. I mean, you know, whatever's available for the stocks that we're taking a look at or the stocks that you own. So what we can do is specifically target stocks that have weekly expiring options and a lot of volatility by buying those if we need to here's the catch though the shorter the time frame that you choose to collect your rent for or your premium by the way we're gonna refer to rent here as premium because to you in the stock stock option world you're actually collecting premium not rent but my point is that you know the further out you go the more money you get the shorter of a time frame the less premium you get which kind of makes sense if you're thinking about it. But we still want to use the shortest amount of time possible because your money or your shares are tied up in that position until this contract that we're selling actually expires. So with that being said, you're going to want to look for the sweet spot where the money that you're collecting is enough to make it worthwhile without, you know, taking a year or two. And if you're not familiar with options whatsoever, you're probably wondering what strategy we're discussing, so let me go ahead and tell you the strategy that I'm referring to right now is simply known as selling a covered call. It is one of the basic strategies available through stock options. It's pretty safe and easy to use. Options consist of two components, a call and a put. So in very basic terms, calls are purchased if you're expecting the value of shares to rise or increase and puts are purchased if you're expecting that share value to decrease. And you would purchase a put if you want to profit from the share price decreasing. Obviously, you're purchasing the call if you're wanting to profit from the share price increasing. So when buying a call option, you're essentially paying the seller of the option a premium in exchange for the right to be able to purchase, but not be obligated to purchase, the shares which remember it's 100 shares, at the strike price before or on the expiration date. But if the share price does not reach above the strike price by the time the, auction expired, the option expires, then the option expires worthless for the buyer, meaning that the seller keeps his shares and the premium received from the buyer becomes his profit. Now, 99% of the time, you'll want to be the option seller as majority of all options purchased expire worthless. While selling a covered call is a great way to earn consistent profits, you do have some risk involved. The risks include capping your upside potential on the shares of stock that you are holding and being called out on your shares. Essentially, you would be obligated to sell your shares at the strike price if the share price were to reach the strike price before expiration. Keep in mind that a buyer can exercise the call at any time that the contract is in the money and they do not have to wait until the contract actually expires. So that wraps it up with covered calls and we're gonna move right along and get into cash covered puts. Now cash covered puts, this is an extremely effective strategy in allowing you to acquire shares of stock at a much lower cost basis and generating consistent profits. 
What makes this a really good strategy is that you're basically getting paid not to purchase the stock. And in the event that this doesn't work out for you, your risk is simply that you're that you are required to buy the shares from the buyer of the put option. So what your goal ought to be is to do this with stocks that you don't mind owning. So for example, if you want to buy a stock, rather than going and buying it just flat out buying the shares, what you need to do is sell a put option on it. One that will expire in the money and then whatever premium you collected is what your discount will be. So for example, you're going to see that the break even price will tell you whatever your new cost basis is or whatever the cost basis will be with you doing it that way as opposed to doing it the traditional way. Now, if you're patient and you really don't care either way whether you, you know, get to own the stock or not, you're willing to own it, you know, that's not a problem, but you're also willing to just get paid for not buying it. If that's the case, then what you would want to do is just sell an out of the money put or, you know, any put that looks good to you with the proper break even price that's attractive. So keep that in mind before you buy any more shares of stock. In other words, you're literally winning every single time that you do this. There are only two ways that this can play out. A, the share price does not drop below the strike price and therefore you just get to pocket that premium without being obligated to buy the shares from the buyer. Or B, you buy the shares at the strike price that you agreed on and get them at a major discount. And honestly, that's all there really is to selling cash covered puts or cash secured puts. So we're gonna move on to something a little bit more interesting because here's where it gets very, very good. Even better for you, let's say that you buy 100 shares of stock at a major discount because you were obligated to buy the shares after selling a cash secured put. Now you can go in and turn around and sell a covered call on those shares and you can sell the call at a lower strike price as your cost basis will be significantly lower than the current value at which the stock is trading. So selling a call at a lower strike translates into you collecting a lot of more premium than you normally would. It essentially means that you're selling above the current trading price if you were to get called out. So hopefully by now you're seeing the power of using options in your investing and trading strategies. But I've got another great idea for you, okay? I call this the double dip. So let's say that you're sitting on some shares and you're up quite a bit. You want to secure some profits, but you don't want to risk selling the stock and then it moving up again, only this time leaving you behind in the dust. So what do you do? Here's what I would do. First, you sell the shares. You take your profits. And second, you take that money and use it as collateral to sell an in the money cash covered put that you believe will remain in the money at the expiration date. This will allow you to not only take profits on your shares, but also to get back in at a much lower cost basis. So this is why I call it the double dip. Pretty clever, huh? And if you thought that was clever, guess what we're going to do next? We're going to combine. That's right. We're going to sell a call on this that's out of the money if you're interested in keeping the shares. You got to keep in mind that, you know, the closer you are to where that stock can get to as far as, you know, price action goes, the more of a risk of you getting called out there is. But of course, you're still going to profit if that happens. You just may not profit as much as you would by, you know, continuing to do so over a long period of time. But even if you were to get called out, I mean, it's not the end of the world. You can always buy back in and be, you know, good to go. So don't cry. It'll be okay. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. You've made it to the end of the video. If you found this video helpful, I ask that you help this channel out by smashing that like button as it motivates me to keep making videos just like this one every single day. If you're not a subscriber, you should consider subscribing as I publish valuable content like this daily. You can do so from your screen right now and if you want to check out more of my videos, you can click on the video that you'd like to see on your screen right now. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys 
in the next video.